ever wondered what the compiler spits out when you compile C or C++ code? It can be .exe file, .dll file, .lib file, .so file, .a file, and these files actually have names, different names, an executable, an object file, a dynamic library, a static library, so on. But what actually is the difference between them? I remember myself when I was a middle school or high school student wondering why sometimes games and applications are shipped with many, many .dll files while we only at the end of the day need to click or to execute a single .exe file and the game will start. Before I begin today, first of all, I am quite sorry for the delay. I was a bit busy with work and I got really, really sick. I bet you can still hear it in my voice. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Mohido and today we have a programming video. First of all, compilers. You already know what is a compiler. It's just an application that converts source code, text into machine code, zeros and ones that the operating system can understand. And when you click on the output file, the file containing the zeros and ones, it does some magic. It starts a game, it starts an application, it does something. However, sometimes you can make the compiler provides or outputs machine code that is not executable. Meaning, if you try to run them, you will just get an error. Let me show you. As you can see, this is my Ubuntu Linux machine and here I have a simple C++ code. It just prints out hello world to the console. Nothing more, nothing less. I also have the CLAN compiler installed. So now let's try to use it, the compiler, and transform this C++ code to machine code. Or in other words, let's get an executable. By the way, executable files have the .exe format or extension on Windows and nothing on Linux. This command says compile main.cpp file with optimization and the output file should be named app and only app because this is a Linux machine and we do not have extensions for applications on Linux. Now the naming is just a convention, it's not required to run the application, it's just a convention so other people when they see app they understand that this is an executable. Now run. I get my hello world. So what's happening here is that the compiler took our C++ code and created some file that the Linux system can understand and run. And here is another example. I have another C++ code with a function called add and another file with a function called subtract. Let's compile these files into machine code. And for that, I'll be using the CLang again add.cpp, subtract.cpp, these are the C++ source code, the C++ files, and I'll be passing the shared flag. We will be going through the shared flag later, I'll be going over it later, but understand that we are compiling these source code into machine code. Since I haven't passed this time the output file name, it provided a default name which is a.out. If we try to run that a.out, it gives a segmentation fault, it gives an error. So why is that? Well, it's an executable, obviously, but it does not execute. Now, you might be thinking, well, why would I convert my source code into machine code that I cannot even execute? The short answer is usability. Meaning, you are not developing an application, but you are developing some kind of an abstraction over a piece of code that you can use in other applications. But what, why, and how? Let's say maybe you are abstracting some math functions that the calculator needs to use, games might need to use that as well, and so on and so forth. And with that concept in mind, with the concept of abstracting some logic and putting it aside from the application, we are introducing the world of libraries into C or C++. So your application is machine code that will be using the functionalities from other machine code files. So the first chapter in this video is about object files. And to understand object files, we need to understand the compilation process step by step. So first there is the part where the compiler understands the language text and that part is called the preprocessor part. Then we have the compilation step, which transforms the language itself into assembly, and then after that we are passing the assembly output to another step, another piece of the compiler, and that piece is called the assembler, and that 
copies will transform the assembly code into machine code and that machine code is what we know as the object file technically this is the application but without the libraries this is the exact reflection of your code without any extra stuff added to it however this is not an application as if you run this it will not run because the compilation step is not finished well technically it's finished but there is an additional step called the linking step and the compilers can do that by default each application will need at least some default libraries to literally do anything for example if you want to print something to the console you would need to call some function like print or see out or whatever that you haven't wrote but it's there so how did the application find the printer function and execute it this is because of the last piece of the compilation the linker and the linker will manipulate the machine code by adding the libraries so the output of the assembler will be manipulated pieces will be added to it and these pieces will be either the entire library injected to it and that is how static libraries work literally the compiler will just take the entire library and push it somewhere in the object file and tell you tada you have an application or by referencing and referencing means by adding just a small piece of information into the application or into the object file it just gives a hint to the operating system when the operating system starts the application to go and find the library and that is known as dynamic linking so object file is machine code as well and libraries are also machine code and when they are linked together object files with libraries or just a bunch of object files linked together they form an application because it has all the pieces that it needs to be runnable to be executable let me show you how to create a static library here i have three c++ files resembling our library a header file containing all the functions of the library and two cpp files containing the actual implementations of these functions i am using of course the extend c keyword to tell the c++ compiler to not the function names because these functions will be used by other programs so we need them to say the same the idea here is to compile this and generate object files these are machine code as i explained but they are not ready to be executed now we can generate object files by passing the minus c flag to the c++ compiler now this is specific to clang i'm not sure how other compilers do it and as you can see two files are created add.o and subtract.o after we get the object files we can use the r command in linux to create a static library there exists another command for windows but for linux it's the r command static libraries for linux of course end with the .a extension so when you see .a in linux that's a static library that's a bunch of object files archived together compressed together to form one object file one large object file great now we have a static library and we can just use the static library in our application treating it as any other c++ file the compiler will understand that this is a static library and will inject it later to the actual application now to dynamic libraries these are libraries like the static libraries but they are not shipped with the application meaning they're not injected to the application's machine code so when you run the application the application goes and tells the operating system to load the libraries and then the operating system load the libraries provide memory address to the application and the application can use the functions in that memory this is a great way to do stuff because a single library can be loaded once to memory and all applications can just use it plus it separates the application machine code from the library machine code so you do not need to recompile the application when you change the library here i have the exact same library i use in the static library example but this time i'm using the shared flag to compile it and the shared flag tells the compiler to generate a dynamic library of course sometimes they call it shared libraries sometimes dynamic it doesn't matter and of course the extension of dynamic libraries on linux is .so and on windows is .dll now be careful because in linux you must add the lib prefix to the beginning of the library name in this command i compile the file with the shared flag and output the library to the lib my lib as you can see lib is the prefix my lib is the name of the library and the extension is .so since the operating system is responsible for loading the dynamic libraries we must move our library to somewhere where the operating system can find it and there are default configurations you can manipulate where 
the operating system go and finds these kind of files but the default path on linux is the lib folder so we are going to move the library to the lib folder and finally we need to refresh the operating system dynamic library loader by writing down the ldconfig command and this will update the dynamic libraries of the operating system so the operating system can know that okay a new library is loaded into the lib folder now keep in mind that windows tend to always do stuff differently it outputs two files a tiny static library and the dynamic library itself the application must use the static library to find the dynamic library i prefer using linux because it's quite simple just move it to the library folder and then the application can just find it magically now there are two ways of loading a dynamic library first of all is during the compilation time you just tell the compiler to inject some little piece of code inside the application to tell the operating system okay this application will be using this library so when you click on the application it loads the dynamic library the other way is lazy loading the library meaning inside your code inside the application you can fire a kernel system call to load the library the kernel will load the library to the memory and the application can use that library so of course the first choice is easier and that can be done simply by adding the l flag and the name of the library that you want your application to use and to check what dynamic libraries are linked in the application and will be loaded during the execution time when you double click the application you can use the ldd command that will show you all the dynamic libraries and i think that's everything i wanted to cover in this video if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments below next video will be about virtual networking and switches if you find linux and networking quite cool feel free to click that button and click this button as well and that's it till the next time Thank you for watching and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.